So good morning. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us for Financial Fun Friday. And so is this back to 2017, uh, my co-host? Because I am having some serious difficulties over here. <laughs> it's just called sleep. That's all. Just a yeah, little sleepy. Yeah. When you, you know, when you're a little sleepy, sometimes you, you know, things don't always click, but you're good. <laughs> yeah, you are definitely uh, going to be wonderful. And I just want to uh, welcome everyone who's listening in to us on the phone. All of our phone listeners, welcome everyone. Welcome, Leanna and Paulette. Hey, Alice. Uh, hi, Denise, mm -hmm. all of our Facebook watchers. Hello, yeah. everyone. Thank you for joining us. And I am your co-host of Financial Fund Friday, Darlene Jenkins, and my other co-host, Dr. Rita B. Rowland. Dr. Rita B. Rowland. And of course, we are bringing you this courtesy of Affordable Benefit Solutions, where we're always bringing you what's new, but more importantly, what's coming next. Yes, we do bring you what's new and what's coming next. <laughs> so Financial Fund Fridays, everyone. This is a webinar that we broadcast at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on the first and third Friday of each and every month. But guess what? We're also broadcasting live simultaneously on Facebook. So welcome all of my Facebook watchers. And what we do during Financial Fund Friday is that we just pull back the curtain so that you can get an in-depth understanding of not only your employer benefits that you have, but also different retirement preparation options and other financial tips and strategies. So if you would like to join us live here on the broadcast where when you talk, we talk right back to you. You can register at RitaBRolandEvents.com or you can go to our Facebook page. As a matter of fact, if you're on here live, go to our Facebook page at Your AB Solutions, like and follow us there. Or you can go back and catch old episodes of our Financial Fund Fridays on our YouTube page. You can look for us uh, under Financial Fund Friday or Affordable Benefit Solutions. So please go there, like us, follow us and ring the bell so that you can always know when we're uploading uh, new content. And for those of you that are on here now, this is our check-in time. Let us know where you're watching us from because we literally have people who tune in from all over the country and Facebook. I haven't forgotten about you. Please check in and let us know where you call, where you're tuning in from and where you're calling from if you can. So, yeah, so Rita, we're going to do that check-in. Please put it in the chat if you're here live. If you're on Facebook, of course, just drop it right there in the comments so we can give you a shout-out. And I'll start out Washington, D.C. in the house. So let us know where you're watching us from. We got Capitol Heights, Maryland. We got Oxon Hill, Maryland. We got Upper Marlboro. Where else? We got Delaware in the house. I'm watching y'all coming in from all over the East Coast. We got anybody from the West Coast today or from the Central area? Yes, Rita, yes. So if this is your first time joining us for Financial Fund Friday, the whole purpose is just to help you understand your benefits, uh, your money, your spending habits. And if you haven't gone back to our page, your spending habits are directly tied to your money personality. So you want to make sure you take that quiz, uh, go back and watch our other episode on what color is your money. And so, but then after all of that, the bottom line is that your Financial Fund Friday team, we want to help you. Uh, so we are here to help you support and offer solutions that will enable you to reach your financial destination. But before we jump into today's content, I just want to let you know that the information that we'll be presenting today is going to be using a generic approach. And you say, well, why do you do that, darling? Because we have a lot of people on here right now, people that are on Facebook, people that will be watching us later. And without having individual knowledge of each and every person on here, we can't individualize the information that we're sharing. So we use a generic approach. But what we can do is any information that we go over that you say, hey, you know what, ladies? I want to learn more. I want you to help us with that. Give Rita and I a call here at Affordable Benefit Solutions, 
301-577-6340. And we will be able to customize any information that you see here. So please um, accept the information as general in context and apply it where you feel it fits your particular situation. But again, reach out to us 301-577-6340 and we can customize it for you. So thank you so much for understanding. So Rita, this year's Financial Fund Friday theme is fiscal fitness. We want our muscles to have what our we want our money to have muscles. That's what we aiming for, right? So, in that vein, what we want to go over today is a survivor's checklist. And this is very important because Rita and I, with our uh, clients, we often recommend, and when we meet with them, we do what's called a beneficiary review. Because we are in a climate right now where, I mean, literally our loved ones are passing very unexpectedly. And so what happens when you are left as the survivor. And so we just want to give you some tips and um, a checklist to help you get through this devastating time. And I can speak personally on that, as I'm sure many people uh, here watching and viewing us on the line can as well. So Rita, do you want to go ahead and um, pull that up? Yes. And I think it's so important because as she said, like over the last probably three months, I've had about four clients to pass away. I think my brother had a couple, darling. So we've had a lot within our office, like gone. And a lot of the clients have called in and they needed help. And one of the things that we both know, because we experienced um, death in a very personal way, Darlene, her mother, me in the last couple of years, family members that are very close to me, you know, whether it's my dad or um, my aunt, my grandmother, you started to really think about when you're in that moment, Darlene, it's some, you can't necessarily think properly. And so what we do know is that being properly prepared before allows this process to not be so stressful because I mean, you're already going through the emotion of losing a loved one. And now you got to come together and think properly on this side so that you can get all of these things in order. And we know many times this is the time when people are taking advantage of because people are hurting. They're not thinking from a, a very logical point. They're thinking from a very emotional point. So we just wanted to share that this is a checklist we're coming up with because we realized the need. There may be something on this checklist that you feel you would like for us to add to it. So we please feel free to join us. And um, this will be in the, um, the is in the chat box so you'll be able to download this. And for Facebook, we will upload it to our Financial Fund Friday um, Facebook page and you'll have a copy of this. And so it's some things that you need to have. And one of the things you need to have right away that it is immediately is you need to have a obtain a signed death certificate and an autopsy record if you need it. Those are not always needed, but you need that. And within 24 hours, look for your organ donor record. So if you actually, so one of the things that we've done, I hope I have it right here. Darlene, you're going to get me, I have it. We have a book, so when you come in our office, it's a book, um, and she's going to talk about wills and trust later, but there's just a book of who do you want to receive your, you know, this, and where's your, um, who, who do you want us to contact, what's your favorite song, there's a little book, because many times, too, Jenkins, when people pass away, what was, what did mom say, what did dad say, what, what was his song, I don't know who to call, because you're in a place, so when you are prepared for it, it makes it very, very easy, you want to make sure that your inventory, and your safe deposit box, and your papers of the deceased, you want to look for the insurance policies, you want to make sure all of those things are in place, so go put them somewhere, now I know some, some of y'all don't want to tell the kid, you don't want to talk about it, it sounds morbid, and even though death is something that we don't really want to deal with it is the thing that we all are going to have to prepare for so when we get prepared for a, a wedding we get prepared when we get paired for kids for college we got to go pull a record when we get paired for retirement it's always a process for anything so even as we think about 
that last day that we're no longer here. If we don't have a plan, we're leaving our loved ones in a very place that they got to try to figure it all out. So if you have a child or somebody you trust, even if you was like, I don't want them to know, but I had a client who said that he has everything with me in his record. I'm not telling you guys to send us that stuff, but he didn't want his kids to stress and he didn't want them to know everything. So he tells me everything that they know how to go in the house just to say this, this is what to do. But he has a system, but so that they would know what to do. So it's very, very important to have it thing. Contact a funeral home to make arrangements. Now, one of the services that Darlene and I offer, we offer a burial policy. And the company we, we use have a funeral advantage plan. And what it does is it allows you to put those things in a record that they keep in your file. And when your loved ones call them and say, I have lost my mom, my dad, they will send you the information that your mom or dad has already written out everything from what I just talked about, the favorite song, who they want to call, what kind of cast they want, where do they want to be buried, all of that information is in this file. And then they will send an advocate out to the funeral home to make sure you're not being taken advantage of. And on the average, they find people $1,000 to $3,000 they're able to reduce the cost of their funeral. So make sure you contact us. And I think it's so important to contact those friends and those family who can help you out in the time of need. A lot of times we do everything on our own, but there's people who are willing. So when they come over to bring you the cake and the chicken and all that stuff, put them to work, let them help you during this time. Because what we all know is that when you in that emotional state, I just had a client who lost her husband and then she is still in the emotional state. And I'm talking to her, I'm helping her with the insurance policy, what to do. And when they, she called me, I said, whatever you do, don't tell the, um, the funeral home how much money you have because, oh, you got that much money. And all of a sudden the funeral that would have been 13,000, now they cost 18,000 or 20 because they know you have money. So I tell them to call me, I'll let them know that you have a policy, but we didn't got to let them know that how much. And you can then negotiate based on what you want to pay. And then you want to make sure you cancel your services. So if you have meals on wheels or you belong to some elderly services, you want to make sure you contact them and make sure anything that your family member has been paying for that you contact to stop those payments. And you want to get plenty copies of the death certificate because for many things, you're going to need to send them a copy to show proof, maybe of debt, maybe you got some assets. And what's so important that if you didn't have anything in place, not a will, Darlene's going to talk about trust and all of that in a minute, you want to at least have a system in place that you can leave your family not only grieving about you being gone, but really stressing out about how do I do all of this in this emotional state? And so I think it's critical. And I know when Darlene, um, not, I'm gonna talk for her because I know it still could be a little emotion. I remember when her mother passed away, I came in and said, look, what I need to do, let me take over some stuff because I knew the state that she was in. And even though I was emotional and I love Francine, is a different type that my mind was a little clear that I could step in and handle things for her because she was in the, not only did she lose her mother, she's her only child. She has a lot on her to try to handle this, right? But Francina had things in place. So it's easy for someone to come in and assist you when there is a plan in place. So we just wanted you to, to talk about it. Now, Darlene is gonna talk about what do you do within 30 days? Yeah, and Reed, I just wanna add, um, uh, during that time, like I have been in this insurance, financial services industry when my mom passed at that point for 28 years. 28 years I was in the business. And when we say allow other people to help you, like Rita said, she came in and was like, oh, uh, what, L let me just do this. Because I mean, you all literally, I have processed death claims. I know what to do, A, B, C, call this person. But when it was my mom, I couldn't even remember who to call. What are we supposed to do? Do I need a form? Mine completely left me. So allowing people to come in is crucial. I just looking back, I couldn't believe that I just my mind left me and I had recently helped someone else process death claims and walk them through it. So 
within 30 days. Now, after this happened, and friends, if you're helping them, stick around, please, because they still need your help. Rita yes. was right there. My other best friend was right there. My family helping me step by step. But That's a good point, darling. I'm sorry to, to cut you off. That is a very good point because many times, and it's not even for us thinking about us, you know, like when we gone, what's happened. When you know that your family member has lost or a good friend has lost someone, do not just go during that time and in their house all day long. Cause normally during the first couple of days, they probably need some sleep. Okay. But when they, when all of the, when everything is over and when the funeral is over, people tend to just go mind their business again. And this person is left alone. I think that is so critical to talk about Darlene, because we still need help because we're still, it's even more emotional when it's over, because when you're doing it, you still going through the process. Your brain haven't even stepped back to think about, oh my God, my mother, sister, brother, husband, daughter, child, friend, they're gone because you're in the motion of doing everything to prepare to give them a very good send off. But when that's over, oh my God, it's critical that you have someone in that process because it is another whole animal. It really, really, really is. And again, um, you know, I, have, I was in the business 28 years and was just a little lost wandering lamb like everybody else. I became just like my clients, needing someone to hold my hand, <clears throat> you know, and even though, especially us ladies, because we will put on our cape. And, you know, walk around, we super women, we can do everything. But in that moment, I'm so glad that I realized that, you know, you can't do this. Your mind, I don't know where my mind was, honestly. So, but in the next 30 days after the death, and this is very important, you want to notify Social Security notify them to stop those checks if they're getting them. And even if, like my mom was not eligible for social security, but I still had to notify not only social security, but I also had to notify Medicare because she did have Medicare part A and part B that, hey, she had passed away. And let me tell you all, that was very important because last year, now my mom died in 2018. Last year, we got a bill to the house for someone who was using my mother's social security number for Medicare. But because uh -huh. I had, and the bill came to the house, but because I had notified them, I noticed at the bottom, because I was on the phone like, uh, she has passed away. She didn't get any of these procedures <laughs> this year. So why are you, she's gone. But at the end of the bill, it said that the claim was denied, recipient deceased. So I was like, Whoo. so it's very important, notify Social Security, any other uh, departments, like um, if you, the Department of Health, Veteran Affairs, the Administra Veterans Administration, if they were a vet, you know, then you want to find out who was paying their pensions. Like I had to, my mom was a government employee. So I had to call OPM. And this is very important, you all, if this is a, if your loved one is a government employee, because what I didn't know is that they actually, the way they pay is like in advance. So you have to let them know that, you know, hey, my loved one passed on this date. Because if they put that money in that account, they want that money back. And the same thing for Social Security. They want it back and they will come after you. They will come after you. So make sure you notify everybody. Um, uh, motor vehicle department. Though they want those tags within 30 days. You can't keep driving that car around. They say send those tags back and get all of the uh, registration and titling information taken care of. This is just a real quick tip. If your vehicle is already paid for, just a real quick fix, you may want to do what's called a pay on death. You just write that on your title, sign it, and you put P-O-D. That will eliminate a lot of headache of trying to uh, get it probated and different things like that. 
Also, if they have any annuities or anything like that, you want to find out who is paying them. Because again, this could, you know, what company is paying their annuity. So you want to contact them to let them know, hey, this person is deceased. And then to make sure, and this is why the beneficiary review is so crucial and why we follow up with our clients, you want to see, number one, especially if it's an annuity, outside annuity, was there a beneficiary? Are there any benefits left that the beneficiary can now get those funds? Then you want to now locate any important documents like the will. And oftentimes, sometimes, Rita, this is done simultaneously while you're planning, right after the um, passing, people start looking for the important papers. For me, it, it, it was not at the same time, although my mom had a living trust, so I already knew what she had. But you all, I didn't do anything, Rita. I think it was November and my mother passed in September. I oh. hadn't done a thing. I'm like, I'm not even ready to deal with this. Go ahead, Rita. But I, think, but I was going to say the thing that your mother had, which was so critical to making even your, your, your delay okay was that she had a trust. And that process made it very simple for when your mental was ready to handle it. You was able to do something in maybe a couple of hours or that days where many people could take months because if you don't have a plan in place, it's a whole bunch of more work to get those assets to where your parents wanted them to. And I'm gonna say, Jenkins, why you're doing this. This is so important, you guys, because I think Darlene was about 10, 12 years ago, we were in a training. They was talking about beneficiaries and how important it was. And they would they sent a, they gave us an article of a man who um, had been married to his wife for 30 years, but 35 years prior to that, his wife got a job with the New York um, school system. And she had worked for the school system. When she started working, she put her mother down and her sister down as the beneficiary. That's who she had. Five years into her employment, she gets married to this lovely man. <clears throat> they have a wonderful relationship for 30 years. 30 years later, she passes away with a million dollars of insurance to the school system, right? She had the multiples and all of this. When he went to go claim it, it said, you can't come get it because it's not in your name. Well, whose name is it in? It's in the mother's name and the sister. Well, the mother had died six, seven years before that. So now all of it goes to the sister. Well, he went to the sister. She like, um, that's my money. My sister didn't change it. She must didn't want you to have it. Y'all been married 30 years. And so he took it to every court, to the highest Supreme Court. And what that Supreme Court said, whoever name is on this form, it trumps your intentions, it trumps your heart. It trumps what you really believe it should be. It trumps every single thing. And so one of the things when Darlene said, when you come in and sit down with us, we've had clients that have people that have been deceased on their stuff. And they were like, oh, my mother died eight years ago. My father, like they haven't looked at this since they started working or since they had it. So it's really important that she talk about this. It allows it, and the trust is so powerful, she's going to explain it, because sometimes it could even eliminate if somebody is gone. There's multiples that allow you to handle it, so, and you got to do some adjusting. So I just wanted to share that, because people need to understand how important it is, because it doesn't matter how much you love this daughter, your son, your husband. If your sister name one or your brother, that's who's going to get it. That is so very real, Rita. And as I said, and as she just mentioned, my mom had a trust because guess what? Now within these 30 days, if they have a trust, there's a process that you have to go through. Or if they have a will, there's a process you're going to have to go through. And all of this stuff has to be done in a timely manner. If they don't have a will or a trust, the state in which they live has a plan for you as well. And that's a whole bigger issue for you because the will and the uh, no will, now you have to go through probate because if they have real property, such as cars or homes, now you have to look at how do we get the deeds to the real estate change? Well, you're gonna have to go through probate. When you have a living trust, all of that is taken care of while the person is alive. 
it's put into the living trust. You all, when I tell you, like I said, I didn't do any of this until November. And our estate plan attorney, uh, Mr. David Hardy, who in my opinion, and I'm biased, is the best because that's who we work with. He really is. He is the best. And I said to him, you know, he was like, whenever you're ready, it's no big deal. Just let me know. And I did. It was in November. And all I had to do, and he walked me through everything. Go to the register of the wills. Everything is listed in the trust. What she wants. And the beautiful thing about the trust is if you contest it, we have a clause in there. You can put it in or not. But if you contest that thing and say, oh, no, I want this or that, and you lose, you are disinherited. Disinherited. Whereas when you have a will, if you contest it, well, it's just contested and tied up and you still get whatever the person said initially that you were going to get. But it cost me $50, Rita, $50, which was what I had to pay (laughs) to the register of the wills. Because guess what? And this is all in planning and how you look at your assets. My mom had assets, but because they were in a living trust, when she passed away, according to the register of the wills, she had no estate because everything was titled to the trust. Explain that, darling, because I think people don't understand. See, a trust allows you to own nothing but control everything. So what her mother was able to do while she was living was to control all those assets, but the trust owns it. That is real, real powerful if you don't understand. And there's some of the things that the rich do all the time that we just need to understand. Right. And Rita, thank you for just bringing home that point because we have to get out of the mindset of if it's not in my name, I don't own it. What you want is control because when you have control, does it matter whose name it's in and your name is on the trust, but all of the money, if you had, if if my mother would have just had a will, I would have had to get secure a bond. Yes. In case you don't know, the laws have changed. Now, when you have a will, because there has been so much fraud with the state and the executors have absconded with the estate assets, then now the executor has to get a bond for the value of the estate to make sure they do their fiduciary duty. So uh, then if you have a trust, so now you have to contact, uh, you know, the successor trustee, which was myself or whomever you name, will now step up and do the distribution of the assets if they choose, you know, if that's stipulated, that wasn't the case uh, with my uh, mother. You're gonna need to, when you have a trust, if they have uh, different assets outside, you know, like 401ks and different things like that, now that you're in charge, you just give them uh, the trust document to show, hey, I'm now the person in control of these assets. So, um, and then also if the person had like an IRA, then you want to make sure by October 31st of the year following their death that you have started, you've contacted them, but more importantly, that you have started, made a decision on how you want to take those assets. And we know this is a lot. So guess what? You can contact your Financial Fund Friday team members And we will walk you through this and reviewing all of your financial assets right now. So you can give us a call, 301-577-6340. Rita and I, we do this day in, day out, as well as the rest of our team at Affordable Benefits um, Solutions. So yeah, and it's a couple of more things, Rita, go down. Yes, but I wanted to say, um, um, Renee said they used my social security, Miss Bird, in her chat box that they used her social security number and was working, causing her to contest the IRS and state taxes and social security was going to reduce her check. So she's um, retired on disability, receiving her social security, but because someone else was using her social security, they was messing up her own taxes for the state and 
for the IRS because there was conflict. How is she on disability and she's working? And so that goes to another whole thing. So Renee, we're going to add that to our list, understanding the impact of fraud and for you to be able to really maintain excellent credit is because you got to monitor. Some of us don't check our report. We don't know what's going on. So that's another whole story that could even impact you in this because now someone else is using your social and your name. Now you're trying to take care of a loved one and is mass confusion. So I think it's important to really understand that. And I think, darling, when you think about the cost, one of the issues that many people have when I talk to them, well, it costs too much. We talk about depending on how many assets you have. Like I had a client who had about a million and four worth of assets. She had about 700,000 in her thrift saving. Her house was worth about, I think 500. She had a hundred something and some other, like a million four. And she tells me that she thought $3,100 or three grand, whatever it was, was too much money for a trust. And I say, what do you have in place for your kids if something happened? You have nothing. I said, do you understand that the average cost to probate in the state is somewhere between 10 and maybe 15% or 25 to $35,000? So you're willing to give your take away $35,000 from your estate for your children, who's going to be mass confused because they don't have a plan because you don't want to pay $3,000. So you don't want to take one one tenth of a percent of your estate to cover the other 99.4 tenths. Like it blows my mind when people, and maybe because I'm a girl who understand numbers, everything to me is a number. What does that look like? It's like a third of a percent to protect the other 99 I think we got to think about it. So if you think about that, and so there are some other things that Jake is going to talk about. You guys give us about another five or six minutes. We know we normally finish, but this is important. We wanted you to know how important it was. Yep. And Rita, just real quick, check this, everybody. James Brown Estate just got set up. Wow. That's been about 13, 14 years, hasn't it? Just got set up. How much money did his luck, did his son, who's probably now grown, lost that didn't have because of what happened? And his other it's, kids, like, that's crazy. It's probably a million at this point because I can oh. remember in uh, 2000, what's this, 2021, it had to be about 17, 16. It was at 500,000 then with all of the litigation. So, yeah. So also uh, contact the insurance companies and arrange the death benefits to be, you know, paid to the beneficiaries. These are all duties that the trustee would do in the um, uh, if you have a living trust an IRA and pension companies will need death certificates in order to pay the benefits to the beneficiaries. Now, if there was no trust and only a will, as we have here, you have to contact the county clerk and deposit the original, you know, give them the register of the wills, the original will. They will then let you know what your fee is. It's going to be based on uh, the value of the estate. You are going to have to do an inventory. And let me all, let, I have a client who just went through this. It took him two years. A lot of people believe that they can probate, Rita, their will, their loved one can probate that estate for themselves have one disgruntled relative. Mm. If you it's don't have so those forms filled out correctly and in on time, start over. They will keep rejecting them. If your loved ones contest it and get a little bit of knowledge and start going down to the uh, register of the wills before you, now you got an issue. So, um, Darlene, you know, girl, you messing me up over here because I just thought about my client who just passed away saying no name. It's really more important that you get this together when you got um, kids, stepkids, or you got some stepmamas and daddies because she was married. She didn't have any kids with him. He had kids by somebody else. And the policy, she'd been paying for them out of her government paycheck. But when he passes away, then the daughter who has nothing to do with it comes in and her, she's going to control stuff and she want to do it this way. And this client calls me crying. I was like, she don't have no money. You're in control. But when you're in such an emotional state and you don't have anything planned, they came in and basically took over. And I said, well, you need to 
you know, she stood her ground somewhat, but in even after what she said, I haven't even heard from them. And so I'm, to, I'm telling y'all something. Death changes people. Yes, it does. The people who you think they ain't going to do this to me, money, man, it changes people. That's all I'm going to say. So you're going to need to make sure you contact us because you need to have a plan in place. Now, somebody asked me, where was this checklist? If you go to the top of the chat box, we put it in there in the beginning. So if you scroll up in that chat box, you'll find that form. So, and then for Facebook, we'll make sure that we put it in the Fed Friday for we'll upload it to our documents and you'll be able to go there and get it. And so you think about it within 60 days, darling, just so we can finish it up. You want to contact all your creditors, utility companies, make sure if the house is going to be empty, that you secure it up, transfer titles to things that are jointly held. And that's important to get these things done. Because I had a client who father had passed away, the house was in his name. And because she didn't have good credit, she was so afraid. She still had that house in her dad's name for like nine years later. And it took her some changes, but because of grace, she was able to transfer. You don't want to take that risk, which is why the prepping is so, so important. Because one thing, darling, and all of you that are listening to it, we don't never want to talk about death, but it's the thing that we all know is coming. What's unknown? is our date, so we gotta prepare for it. And guess what, there's some things you wanna leave. For me, there's some things my niece wanted a ring that belonged to my mother. I think I gave it to her sooner, but it's a ring. So there may be things you wanna give to people, list those things out. You may wanna give to your ministry, your church or some charity. Those things in the trust, I listed out what I wanted to give. So nobody can, can say, well, she ain't wanna give it to that. I ain't gonna give it to her. My trust tells people what I want, not what you want. Cause from my grave, I'm dictating my assets. These belong on to me even though I'm gone I'm telling you how I want them to be disposed and if you have a surviving spouse please that's one of the things Robert had a client and her husband she had just married him they had only been married a few um um years he didn't know anything and his son called us her son called and asked could you help my stepdad process all they didn't know they had a fagley policy she had a policy with us they had thrift saving because they don't understand government benefits they didn't know what was on the table so we gave them the phone number robert walked them through the whole process so sometimes it's just having someone to hold your hand to make sure that you are able to get everything that you're possible to get and we can help you then transfer those assets in the, the best possible possible way where you're not losing anything that you're able to keep the value what your parent sister brother mother husband wife have worked so hard for so as darlene have said a few times our phone number to contact us is 301-577-6340 and again for those that are online that are um, watching it via zoom you can click it in the chat box download the form and then for those in fed friday that are online with facebook as soon as this is over we will upload the form onto our Facebook Financial Fund Friday um, page. So we thank you. We hope this was some really good information. If anybody have any questions, feel free to ask Darlene and I. Yes, we do have a question. So we got a question um, from Paulette and we had another question from Renee. So mm -hmm. Paulette, I'm the only child too. My mom was a, a retired federal employee and it's really going to a yes. If you have any real property, like a house, especially a car, you may have rental properties, then yes, you will. Because if you leave it in your will, that's going to be probated. So, and as Rita said, it's going to cost you anywhere, you know, on the low end, low end, at least 10% of the value of your estate versus if it's in a trust, it's seamless. Your son would then step up to control the assets and they are his which is what I'm currently doing because my dad, he still lives in the home because that's what my mom wanted. So it's really going to depend. And that's why, hey, sit down with us. Call, Give us a call, 301-577-6340. Rita, then we got another question that said, well, oh my gracious, I don't have a beneficiary on my annuity. So if you are married, if you're speaking about your annuity that you're getting from your employer, like you're a federal government employee. So if you are single, 
then you need to call OPM and get your beneficiary added. If you are married and you don't have a beneficiary down there, if you elected the spousal benefit, your spouse is going to get it anyway. But mm-hmm. you still, and, and then it's going to depend on, you know, how long into retirement your death occurred. If you're a single person, if your beneficiary will get anything anyway, because once your pool of money is exhausted, now you're on, you're into the government's funds. And when you pass away, your beneficiary will not get any money because you, for your annuity, I'm speaking about your retirement money here because you've exhausted the money that you deposited into the retirement system. And Jenny, let me just help people right now. This is when I tell y'all government employees who be always fussing about your job ain't this day, the government ain't paying nothing. For y'all first employee, let me just help your life just a little bit. For most of you who have been there before 2013, you're paying less than 1%, but let's just say it's 1%. 08. I know what it is, but let's just say is is once because you know math is easy, darling. When it's one percent, right? Let's oh, say your absolutely. average salary was, let's say your average salary was a hundred grand. With some of you over your life, it wouldn't be one percent of a hundred grand is what one thousand dollars. Let's say for thirty years you paid that one thousand dollars per year. That's thirty thousand. Let's say you're gonna work forty. That's forty thousand dollars. That's all you paid into the system. Your entire life, you gave the government $40,000. Now you retire in your high three. Let's just use that same $100,000. Darlene, they're getting 30% of $100,000. Could you get 1% for every day, for every year you work? So you got $30,000 in the first year of retirement. And you mean you only put in $30,000 your whole life? And in your first year, you got back everything. And from year two to death, that's the government money. I want y'all to understand, you would need 4 trillion percent of interest to be able to get that return on your money. So I want y'all to stop complaining about this government, this ain't nothing. Baby girl, many people, brothers will love to have that. That's all you put in. So I just want you, and that's only one tier of your retirement. So when you sit down with Darlene and I, we're going to really help you to understand what you have, but how to maximize it to best suit you and your family your goal. That just wanted to share that, Darlene, because many people, when they come to that money, they don't understand that. I wasn't t- telling my girl point, point eight is right, but people, I'm, my brain is good with numbers. I ain't trying to do point eight this morning. <laughs> yeah, mine is not. I mean, it is when I got my calculator with me. And Sharon, you said, what about the property? Can you just put in the chat what you mean? What about the property? And that's the beautiful thing when you have a living trust. And I'm really hammering this because when I tell you, if I would have had to go through anything else, settling my mother's estate, I probably would just be getting back in my right mind right now because I'm going to just be real with you all. My mom died September of 2018. The whole year of 2019, even though you saw me on here happy talking, I was a walking, talking zombie. I didn't even realize I had missed the whole year until I finally took off in December and said, you know what? Forget it. I'm going to take off and I don't care. And then I just started trying to reflect. Do you know I could not remember what I had did for Thanksgiving the prior year? I had to call people. Was that with you? I literally didn't know. I was just walking and talking and nobody knew. But that's why it's so important to stick with people. So yeah, but that trust, I went in, I paid that $50, everything, um, oh, air property, Sharon, air property is really tricky. If it's air property, you cannot put that in a trust because the person who originally had it died without a will. And that's how all of the heirs, that's how it became air property. And with that, it's going to depend on the state you live in. Um, That's real tricky that you all are in. Um, But give us a call and we can go over some uh, information with you. It is real tricky because one heir can come in and put a fly in the whole bowl of milk and it's it's over for everybody. It's it's, it's a real mess. Like the people down in... um, 
in South Carolina, the Gosha people. Yeah. So that was our survivor's checklist, you all. We wanted to make sure you had that. And, you know, planning, which is what we're trying to get you all to do and keep it on the forefront of your mind, is just bringing the future into the present right now so that you can do something about it today. And so contact us today so that we can help you map out a strategy to put all of the pieces together. 301-577-6340. And of course, about us, I know you only see Rita and I, but guess what? It's a whole team of us here. And we can help you at Affordable Benefit Solutions with all of your financial needs from your retirement plan. It doesn't matter if you just walked in the door or you're going to be leaving in 15 minutes because you're retiring this year. We help you with uh, what to do with your TSP, making sure you maximize all of your uh, assets that you have, tax-free retirement banking, estate planning. That's what we kind of went over with this uh, survivor's checklist, insurance services. You have loved ones. I mean, this pandemic, this virus that's out here, it is snatching people that we know and love left and right. GoFundMe is not an insurance policy. We have a burial policy. Sorry, repeat that again. Repeat that again. Make it clear. GoFundMe is not an insurance policy. Every time I read, and I don't want to say every time, but most times it's so often when I read these stories, oh, this person passed unexpectedly from COVID, this person, and such and such has set up a GoFundMe for their family, for their children. We had that happen in our family. It is nothing worse than losing a loved one and then have to go and ask people for money. I was new in the business and that gutted me when we had to go and ask people and people gave, but that look you get like, y'all ain't had no insurance. Okay, here. You don't want to go through that. Get this basic burial policy. It's not that expensive. And guess what, Rita? This plan that we have, you're going to get the funeral guide. You're going to get someone other, you know, including us, that's going to walk you through the process. And it doesn't matter your health as long as you're not watching us right now from, um, you know, a hospital bed. You pretty much <laughs> can get it. And then we also can help you with your credit and debt situations. So we got you covered, as my grandma used to say, from the rooter to the tutor. When it comes to your financial life, we got you covered. So contact us today, schedule an appointment, give us a call. Here we are. We're located at 9500 Medical Center Drive in Largo, Maryland. But it doesn't matter where you're watching us from because you know what else this pandemic has taught us? We can uh, see and talk to people no matter where you are. This pandemic has broken down borders. They no longer exist. And we've always been here, your Financial Fund Friday team, to support you. So give us a call, 301-577-6340. We appreciate you all hanging in here with us today. Is the music on? Yeah, it did get real today. Oh, yes. I wanted to show them something when this music stopped. I, um, I don't know why. Let's go back. Let's go back to the front page. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. one of the things I talked about earlier, I found this, you guys. Sorry, I was trying to get it. Is it's this book called My Final Wish is Everything You Want Your Loved Ones to Know. So when you come in with us, we'll um, make sure that you have one, one of these. It talks about the, 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 the cemetery where you want to go people to call what's your where you're the location of your important documents your assets your thoughts maybe what you want to um, leave to them memories everything the clothes you want to wear maybe and so you need to have a plan so it was Darlene was saying that her process was a was a rough process but because there were systems in place she was able to still get through them without being worried about some other things and one of the things Renee wanted to know what what was five times so if you was a if you're a government employee and you have their Fagley life insurance you can get five times your salary you can get anywhere from one to five times so if your salary is a hundred thousand and fifty dollars it rounded up to a hundred and one and so five times would be five hundred and five thousand dollars so that's 
what that is, Renee, to know that it's up to five times your salary. So I wanted to make sure I answered that question. And Darlene, check the chat box. I think there's another question in the chat box or uh, something. No, I don't know. Okay. All righty. So that was it. Just wanted to let you guys know when you come see us. So we thank you for hope for hanging in there with us longer today. But we wanted to share some very important information. It could be a little sad, but it's important for us to have a plan even for that. Absolutely. And just as a reminder, your Financial Fund Friday team will be off the month of September. We are going to be taking a much needed vacation. Oh. Yeah. So we're going to be off the month of September, but that doesn't mean we're not going to be in contact. So uh, check your emails. We're going to be sending out things. And also, this is a great time. If there are any topics you want to hear about, uh, you want us to expound on anything, please email us. And we will get you that information. And if you want to, you can just drop it in the chat right now. So I'm going to go back to that slide. So you have our email. And I'm going to see, Rita, how to stop the music. I think you hit the button to mute it. Thank you. And thank you to all of our few um, members that was at the conference last week. You guys um, joined us for Financial Fund Friday. You showed up. Thank you. We hope that you got something out of it. And we look forward to all of these great relationships. So please, thank Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you, Denise. We're, we're going to enjoy this vacation. I told Dolly, just looking at the water is going to be enough for me to just debrief this brain and sh shut it down some. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm going to get my um, seasickness patch. So as I'm looking at it, I'm not sick. So I'm ready to look at that water. So here's our information. Let's really, see. here's our information. No, you got hits. Is it stop? Yeah, no, it stop. Okay. <laughs> so so take you a can, picture. Yes. Go ahead, email us at fff at yourabsolutionsinc.com. As Rita said, you know, grab a screenshot of it and, you know, give us a call. Email us any topics you want to know more about or you want us to discuss. Let us know because as we say, when you talk, we talk we back. Talk back. What are you saying? So we look forward to seeing you all in October. But please watch your emails because we are going to be sending stuff out. Everyone have a great, great Friday. And don't worry about the weather on the outside. What's the weather on the inside of you? Over here is sunshine sunny and sunshine. Yes. Have a great Thank weekend, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend.